Hey there YouTube! Welcome to the second video on this channel about the Unify Light 6 Access Point, which you can tell I have right in front of me. Uh, my name is Nash with Total Tech Solutions. If you're looking to get a little bit of consulting on your Unify network, please vid visit us at totaltechwnc.com. The link is in the description. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at this wonderful Unify 6 Access Point. So, I currently have this adopted into my network, so what we're going to do is we're going to factory reset this guy, which uh, will take it off of my network so we can go in and uh, record on how to adopt this product. So this is a really good access point. Um, there's still some software bugs with it, uh, kind of limiting the speed of this guy, but I can only imagine that Unify is going to uh, work that out with this product because this is going to be, their Unify 6 line is going to be the re replacing their current access points, at least my understanding at least. So uh, it's very simple here, it is a white access point, it has a, a color LED ring around uh, the, si or the inside of this here. Uh, it changes between blue and white depending on uh, what mode it is in. So. Um, if you're uh, adopting it, it's going to be a solid white ring. If it's already adopted, it's going to be a solid blue ring. On the back of this guy here, you have the brand, the Unify branding with a QR code for adoption, uh, just in case the uh, Bluetooth option is, is not working. On the bottom here, we have a RJ45 PoE in port. So this is powered only by PoE. There's no other power port on this guy. And then the only other option you have is a reset button. So let's get this plugged into my PoE switch and uh, we'll start adopting it to the network. All right guys, we're in my little network area here now. So I have this guy plugged into my 16 port PoE switch here. We're not gonna go through all my other equipment. Uh, we're gonna focus on this today. So as you can see, there's a white uh, LED light blinking. That means it is powering up um, and we're waiting for it to adopt. So once this is fully powered up, we're gonna take it over to the computer and we're gonna do the rest of the magic from there. Just to show you that we're just plugged in at, or, uh, through the PoE port as of the time being. So uh, let's give this a moment and we'll uh, meet you back at the computer to get this adopted. All right, so we're back at the computer now, folks, and we're on the uh, Unified Dashboard page here. So we're gonna click on my UDM Pro and we're gonna click over to the network. If you guys are looking for a awesome video on uh, the uh, Unify network controller and a whole overview of it. That was the first video on this channel. So if you're looking for an overview of version six of the Unify network controller, uh, go back to my channel and check that out. It would uh, probably be a big benefit for someone new to Unify. So anyway, we're gonna try to adopt this device into our network. So we wanna go over to the devices tab here and you can see all my other devices in the network. Uh, I have my UDM Pro, I have a little five port flex mini, I have my 16 port PoE, and then I also have a power plug, a USD uh, plug that is uh, keeps on getting disconnected from the network, and then a Beacon HD, which I just have offline at the moment. But right here is what we're looking for. So you ha we have the U6 Lite. So we want to click on this guy here and press Adopt. So this is going to run through the process of adopting it, and then it's added to your network. So it's super easy, guys. Um, it's just a simple click of a button to get it added to your network once it is plugged into your network. So as you can see here, it is now provisioning and we will be back once this is done provisioning. Awesome. So after about three minutes of uh, provisioning, the Unify 6 access point is added into our network and is ready to uh, make modifications to uh, the radio bands and all that good stuff. So as you can see here, it has an IP address of uh, 192.168.0.56. That is just uh, uh, DHCP there. And you can see that there, al there already is some traffic up and down. So this, this particular device has already been added to my network before, so it must have just pulled the data from last time. So we're going to go ahead and click on this here, and it's going to give you some other stats here. It's going to tell you the firmware version, and if it was a new device out of box, there probably would be a firmware update you'd want to push to it. And it's going to tell you some other settings here, but uh, we want to go to the config side of it, and we're going to give this an alias, and uh, I'm going to call this the U6 Lite Main AP, because that's what it is for me. I'm going to save that here, and it's going to change the name, and it's going to reprovision. We also want to go down to the radios, so currently we have everything on auto which is isn't what we want so um, we want to try to get a little bit more speeds out of it so I guess the first step here is 
let's have my phone connect to the Wi-Fi and let's do a speed test uh, via speedtest.net and let's see the current uh, speeds. But the first thing we need to do, we need to go to your settings here. Let's close this out. I have my three Wi-Fi networks that nothing is connected to currently. So we want to click on edit. We're going to go down to advanced here and we're going to make sure that the Unify uh, 6 Lite is is going good here so let's make sure that is selected and let's see here let's remove this okay how about this how about we just select all APs get rid of that apply changes and at that rate uh, devices should start reconnecting back to the Wi-Fi network so we're gonna do this over here too because I only have one access point obviously if you had let's say five access points in your network you wouldn't want unless you wanted to obviously but you wouldn't want this one uh, network to be broadcasting on all your access points but for me I only have one access point so it doesn't matter um, so that is that is going to be connecting here uh, let's check the Wi-Fi out now on my phone alright so the Unify main access point here that we just uh, added to, or uh, added to the network is now provisioning uh, our Wi-Fi changes so Keeping an eye on my phone here, uh, the Wi-Fi network did pop up, but it went away. This is still provisioning. That is normal. So once this is done provisioning, the Wi-Fi network will show up on my phone here. And then we're going to show you on the phone that we are connected to the, uh, the Wi-Fi network. And we're going to do a speed test. All right, so we just got connected here. So let me throw up the recorder on my phone. And that will obviously play over onto the video clip here with the magical editing. So we're going to go to speed test here. And I'm about six feet away from the access point currently. So let's do a speed test here. It's telling you that I have uh, AT&T internet. So this is fresh out of the box without any modifications to it at all. And let's, while this is running, let's go here. Let's go to settings. And we can see on the radio's band that this is all auto. Nothing has been changed. Transmit power is on auto, and this is fresh out of the box. So you can see my download speed ended up at 195, and my upload speed ended up at 284. So not too bad out of the box, but I think we could do better. So uh, let's close off the recording here on the phone, and let's get back to the computer. So <clears throat> next step here. I'm more focused on the 5 gigahertz band. Um, that is the band that... I use the most because I live in a small, a small apartment so the 2.4 gigahertz band is only used in my particular setup for like my, my IOT devices and things like that so the main channel I'm worried about is the 5 gigahertz so let's bump this up to HE40 if it isn't already and I don't want this on auto I know that uh, channel 149 is going to be the channel I want to be on but if you didn't know what channel you wanted to be on you'd want to swing over to tools and you'd want to start an RF environment scan this would tell you uh, what interference is on what channel band, and then you can kind of change your access point accordingly. So we're going to put this on 149 because I know that that is a good channel, and I also want to put my transmit power to high. So the only other setting I'm not changing is HE40 to HE80. Um, this is just going to give you a wider broadcast range. We're going to start off on HE40, and we're going to see what our speeds are, and then we'll bump it up to HE80. But this particular setting is relevant for the 2.4 gigahertz band. For example, I'm just going to change this to 6. Let's put this on HE40 and put this on high too. All right, so let's press Q settings or Q changes, apply changes, and you can see here that the access point is now provisioning. So once this is done, we'll be back and let's do another speed test. Awesome. Okay, so we're done provisioning here. So the next step is to try a speed test again. So we're going to start the recording on my phone again here and we're going to open up the speed test app again so let's do a new speed test after we have these changes here we're now on transmit power high on both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz bands and we now have set channels that would hopefully cut out the interference so let's do a speed test and let's see what we're getting now I think that we're going to be better than 196 for the download speed at least that's what I'm hoping um, it is connecting 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 here let's see if it connects there it goes just needed to find a server so let's see what happens so we got a little bit over that 196 range we're up to about 250 260 255 let's see there it goes 260 
and that's on the download speed. So 274 was the final speed up for that, but it did kind of hurt our upload speed. So let's see what that caps out at. But personally for me, my download speed is more important than my upload. So uh, that for me would be okay. Uh, obviously not for everyone. So let's see if we can make a couple more modifications and see if we can get a little better speed. So we ended up here after these modifications, we ended up on the download speed of 274, upload of 108, still roughly about six feet away. I'm in the same, I'm sitting in the same spot as I did the first test in. So let's change this to HC80 and uh, cue the changes. Let's see if changing the channel width at all uh, increases our speed. So again, we're gonna let this provision and we'll be back. All right, so we are back after it has finalized the provisions. So we're gonna start up the recorder on the phone again and open up speedtest.net here and we're gonna run another speed test. So this modification, we changed the five gigahertz channel width to HE80 instead of HE40. So let's do a speed test and see if we're getting any better speeds because of that. So 21 millisecond ping. Oh, there we go. So we're getting over uh, 300 megabits on the download now. Let's see what it finalizes at. 346. Keeps on going here. 344 on the final download speed. On the upload speed, we're looking a lot better now too. So we finalized at 316. So for me, and for a client's case, um, this would probably be sufficient. I wouldn't make many more modifications to this because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I think we could probably get faster speeds out of this guy um, eventually down the road when it comes to um, software updates. So I think there will be more configuration on that end uh, later down the road w with uh, firmware updates to get faster speeds. But for now, we're getting about 300 on the up and download speed. I am okay with that. So we're going to uh, call it a video, guys. If you have any more questions about the Unified Network Controller or you're looking to hire us, please uh, send us uh, your comments, questions, concerns down at, at our website below, totaltechwnc.com. Uh, there's a contact us page. Uh, fill out your information or give us a phone call directly, whatever works best for you. Uh, we'd be happy to accommodate you. Uh, any other video ideas or if you found this video very much helpful, please give us a like below and maybe a subscribe. Uh, we'll be doing a lot more videos like this. And if you're looking for a great overview on the Unify Network, take a look at our first video on the channel. That is an awesome video going into every little single nook and cranny of the Unify Network Controller on version 6. Anyway guys, that is it for me today. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. Until the next one, bye.